Once patients extend their skin disease beyond uh, localized areas of involvement and develop so-called T2 disease, which means patches or plaques on more than 10% of the skin surface area, or infiltrated plaques, uh, and I mean infiltrated or raised skin lesions on more than 10% of the skin surface area, we not only continue to use skin-directed therapy, but in our clinic, we often add what we refer to as systemic therapies, therapies that are administered either by mouth or by injection uh, that help control disease, not only from the outside, but from the inside as well. So among these therapies, uh, in addition to topical chemotherapy and PUVA, which are potent skin-directed therapies, are therapies such as interferons, which I will discuss in a moment, oral bexarotene, which is the same as targretin, which is a capsule, which I will discuss. Uh, and then there are a group of other systemic agents, uh, such as methotrexate, histone deacetylase inhibitors, or HDAC inhibitors, which include varinostat, which is the same as Zalinza, and ramidepsin, which is the same as Istodax. We also use electron beam irradiation, which is a powerful skin-directed therapy. And occasionally patients who have T2 skin disease are entered into clinical trials if they fail to respond to one or more other courses of therapy. We frequently like to use low-dose interferon alpha, which is administered by injection. Many of my patients ask me when I prescribe interferon for them why I am administering chemotherapy to them. Interferon alpha is not chemotherapy. It's a protein that our own healthy white blood cells manufacture and release in response to viral infection. It is a direct stimulant to our immune response and it directly stimulates killer T cells in a rather effective way. It also helps suppress growth of the abnormal malignant T cells. It is a very, very effective agent. It also helps stimulate uh, immunologic memory so that if patients are on it for a long duration of time, perhaps six to 12 months or longer, it can help stimulate memory T cells that might sustain a good clinical response to therapy and thereby help prevent relapse or progression in the future months ahead. We typically start at low dose at about 1.5 million units three times per week, uh, and that is about half the typical dose that's used, for instance, for hepatitis B or C. If patients tolerate it well, we often push the dose up. We do know that there is a dose response, so often we're required to increase the dose, but there can be a dose-limiting response that is limited by some of the adverse effects. Some of these adverse effects include flu-like symptoms, which are worse at the initiation of dosing, which, which gradually diminish with subsequent injections. Uh, there are cognitive effects, particularly in the elderly. What do I mean by this? The cognitive effects can include difficulty concentrating, difficulty remembering things. And these side effects do not occur often, but they are more frequent among individuals over 60 years of age. There can be mild liver inflammation, uh, which uh, usually does not progress to uh, severe liver inflammation, uh, and it usually does not limit our ability to administer the medication, and we monitor this by doing routine blood chemistry tests every once in a while. Uh, more worrisome is peripheral neuropathy, which is usually manifested as numbness and tingling of the hands and feet. Rarely there is loss of taste, uh, which is considered a peripheral neuropathy. But fortunately, uh, these symptoms usually 
slowly resolve upon discontinuation of the medication. There, there can be what we refer to as autoimmune manifestations, which fortunately also are quite unusual. And these can include inflammation of the thyroid gland or the development of diabetes. But these findings are quite unusual and occur in very few of our interferon treated patients. There are reduced blood counts, which occasionally occur, but usually these two do not limit the administration of the medication. Uh, one of the benefits of interferon, as I've alluded to already, is interferon is a powerful stimulator of killer T cells and NK cells that kill tumors. Uh, and interferon is very good at this. It is also very good at inhibiting the growth of the cancerous T cells. Interferon is also very good at inhibiting the production of so-called Th2 cytokines. These are cytokines that are made by the cancerous T cells that can put the break on the immune response and interferon can help eliminate those. There is a dose-dependent response that is quite high in interferon-treated patients. The higher the, the dose, the higher the response rate, but of course, the higher the dose, the greater the likelihood of adverse effects. Response rates may be greater with interferon when it's used in combination with PUVA, uh, with oral retinoids such as Targretin or Accutane, or with photophoresis for Cesare syndrome, or in fact, with another interferon, so-called interferon gamma. I'd like to spend a few minutes also discussing a very valuable treatment agent, which is bexaretine, which is also known as Targretin. Uh, this is a man-made type of vitamin A compound, which is very effective for cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And what you can see on this new slide uh, is that there is a dose effect in the test tube of bexaretine or targretin to kill highly purified malignant T cells of our patients. Shown on one scale is apoptosis, which is the level of death of the cancerous T cells. And on the other scale is the concentration of bexaretine at one micromolar or 10 micromolar. And you can appreciate at 10 micromolar, there's a much higher level of cell death of the malignant T cells. And the significance of this is that uh, as there is with interferons, there is a dose response with bexaretine. In other words, the higher the dose, the greater the likelihood of a response. But the dose response is again limited by the adverse effects shown on this slide here, which is elevated serum lipids, which usually require the use of a statin drug, uh, followed by the use occasionally of fish oil or a drug named phenofibrate or tricor, and patients should also be on a rigorous, low saturated fat diet while they're on Targretin to prevent elevation in their serum lipids or fats. It can also lower the level of thyroid hormone. So virtually all patients on Targretin uh, require supplementation with thyroid hormone. Now we know that the effects of bexaretine or Targretin are multifold in that we know bexaretine can kill or induce apoptosis of the cancerous T cells. We also have evidence that bexaretine can inhibit the ability of the cancerous T cells to move into the skin, which can be very, very beneficial in terms of control of symptoms such as itching and redness. We know that Many patients are consistently sensitive to it, while others are not sensitive. They may be resistant right from the start, which is the very reason why we try to proceed with Targretin use in combination with another therapy 
to try to get the, the most significant mileage out of treatment. We also have evidence for the development of resistance to Targretin. So let's keep that in mind. If you respond and then you fail to respond, you are likely resistant to Targretin and therapy should change. And again, we recommend that it be used in combination with an interferon, with PUVA, and in the case of patients who have blood involvement with photophoresis. Bexeratine has significant advantages. It's effective for all stages of CTCL. It, there is a dose response where you can use a higher number of capsules to derive a better benefit, but again, keeping in mind that with a higher number of capsules, the side effects that I discussed could be more prominent and more difficult to control. It's generally well tolerated aside from hyperlipidemia uh, and hypothyroidism, and it is easy to administer because it's administered as a capsule. Now for so-called T3 disease, which is tumor stage disease, this can be very difficult to treat. Patients who have tumors, particularly multiple tumors, are often at our center treated with radiation first. Uh, and if they have extensive tumors, we often employ total skin electron beam, which in the hands of a highly skilled administrator or radiation oncologist can be an especially effective therapy for these patients. We often like to administer it in the context of also using an immune modulatory therapy, particularly an interferon, either interferon alpha or interferon gamma, in an effort to prevent recurrence of disease and to facilitate clearing of the skin. We often use Targretin as well for tumor stage disease, or if patients cannot uh, have access to Targretin or tolerate Targretin for one reason or another, we often like to use another oral retinoid uh, together with radiation therapy. Uh, if patients fail to respond to this regimen, uh, then we often have to pursue chemotherapy either in the form of single drug chemotherapy or multi-drug chemotherapy or in the form of uh, HDAC inhibitors, either ramidepsin or varinostat. Patients are often entered into clinical trials, uh, and uh, if they fail to respond, we attempt to consider bone marrow transplantation, particularly allogeneic transplantation for patients with tumor stage disease.